Hey guys, welcome back to Davidia Tempera. It has been, uh, well, I uploaded those last two videos uh, pretty much the same day that I uh, recorded. So, um, it's, it's been about a week. I haven't had a chance to get back to the game a whole lot, and uh, I haven't also had a chance to do a long series in a while, or not a series, but like a long session in a while where I can record like four hours of content. I, I like to do that because then I can just release the videos on a drip feed like over a week or so. And um, yeah, last time session was pretty short and today's session will probably be pretty kind of short two, maybe two or three videos. Cause um, I just uh, I just got off of work uh, an hour and a half ago. It's about 9 a.m. here in, in Texas in Texas and uh, I'm, I'm pretty scatterbrained at the moment, but we're gonna try to function. Um, music's a little, let me adjust these settings. I've been playing, uh, some, uh, Aroma campaign a little bit on the side. And, uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can get a few episodes down today. That'd be very nice. Uh, it is, what's the date? June 28th. I'm dating my video. That's always a recipe for failure. Uh, <laughs> you date your stuff and then people go, why did it take you two weeks to upload this? Well, you see... <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually a pretty introverted person, and uh, uh, doing doing recording sessions actually takes like a lot of effort and energy, and I actually find myself being very exhausted afterwards, um, but like in a good way. So let's try and refamiliarize ourselves, right? So we have this big stack here, but this stack really isn't ready to do a whole lot, and we're, I think we're thinking about advancing up north and maybe shoring up some sort of garrison or something along those lines. Uh, up north, uh, up to the west here, um, due to concerns about Parthava being around and still having some territory up here, I fully expect them to come try to take Sajakarta at some point, and I want to have some sort of like response army for that eventuality. Um, what do I do? I want to add anything to this stack? So I have 20 units here to deliver, not counting the general and the baggage train, which I don't need. And I just want to take another look at this force for units that I would want to replace if I want a quality army, right? So these are probably all of the units I would replace if I was going for a high quality army at minimum. And maybe these two as well, because having eight javelins and 12 archers is kind of dumb. It's not dumb. It's just a lot for me. Um, so we're looking at what? Seven, ten... It's like 17, like 19 units. Is That's actually more units than I was uh, replacing. But I, I included some archers, so that makes sense. So I have 19 that I want to replace, and I'm replacing these two. There's another six. So there's like 25 units. So I have three extra slots. And we were thinking about maybe elephants, right? I mean, they're expensive. They are expensive. We have lots of uh, shrudas. I think that's our third class. Yeah, we don't have many up here, but it doesn't really matter that much. The cost is 3600 And, uh, you, you notice the, um, upkeep is much, much, much lower for this guy. Uh, and I'm not 100% why. I assume part of it's the champion. Um, he does have the military logistician, which is a trait I don't focus effort into until I have a bunch of other crap. But, um, yeah, okay, okay. I think we'll recruit him under this guy. Let's uh, replace units I don't care about too much, and let's take our time replacing them so I don't uh, gas myself out, right? Because I could spend all that money right now. Um, actually, I don't even think I could fully afford it, but yeah, we would, we would run out of money. Uh, looks like we have some public order issues in our home province. Um, is that due to the government reform still? Is that still a thing? Yeah, negative 14. Okay, that's not really going anywhere. Um, how much do I care about that? How much do I care about that right now? Do I care enough to spend 1,600 monies? The answer is no. <laughs> I don't care that much. Uh, we definitely don't want to lose too much happiness in our home province of Maka. Because, you know, it'll be a bad time for us. But we're, we're getting a little bit of uh, three more public order through our temple that's finishing up our shrine of Sri Devi that's 
finishing up next turn. So that's good. I think we'll be okay. Um, this raiding party is kind of freaking me out a little bit. I will add um, something else cheap over here. 85 per turn? Blech. Yeah, whatever. Just, just one. <laughs> this may slowly form into the newest army over time. Um, but not anytime soon, for sure. Are you in patrol stance? You need to be in patrol stance. Save your, save yourself that cash and food every turn. Uh, just, you know, 400 gold now spread out over every turn that I use patrol stance on. Every turn he moves up here. That's actually quite a bit of gold. That can buy you some units. That can buy you some time if your empire is about to fall apart because you managed it poorly. Um... This force I would like to keep here, I think. 206 out of 520 food is pretty bad, though. Um, that's not much food. Ooh, 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 it's really bad over here. Okay, we have 420 there. 420, blaze it. Um, yikes. So we have, I mean, it's summer, so it's not the highest production, but it's average fertility only and Susia only has the grain pits of course they have the double temples coming hmm that's not much supplies um I think we'll be able to swing it or the capital will be able to supply them or the maybe Maka can supply it through the supply but let's just find out if we starve yeah if we starve we starve there, there are ways around we can go through Bactria if we have to uh, they're not gonna like it I don't think we have military. No, we do have military access. They asked for that, I remember. Yeah, so we're okay. We're fine. We can we can actually move th freely through Bactria. In fact, we can uh, we could sit a stack over there if we want to. Just have it hanging out in their territory, eating their food instead of my food. In fact, if we feel like we might want to go to war with them, we could even sit armies in their territory intentionally to eat their food uh, and cause them to starve. It's too bad uh, the supply system that um, Davida Tempera adds doesn't come with like a diplomatic penalty for eating another faction's food. Uh, eating their supply because, wow. That would definitely... You think about that in real life, right? That's why military access is not granted so freely for some to some extent. Not just the threat to the state, but also the devastation that causes to the land. Having an army march across your land is not a peaceful event, no matter you know if they're friendly or not. Uh, you're likely to see, you know, maybe some bad things happen to some of your citizens that they complain about. Why couldn't you protect me from this army that's supposedly friends with us? Uh, something to think about there. So plus tax rate's always good. Uh, minus empire maintenance is always good. I'd love to get more research rate. I think this is really powerful if you stack it on all of your sages. Uh, because, you know, if you if you have three, 15% on each, you've boosted your research by 45% for basically no cost. Um, why didn't I get cultural conversion on you? I guess I just figured since it's the home province, he doesn't need it. I'm not, I'm not sure about all of my choices for this sage now that I'm looking at his skills. Uh, 8% wealth from commerce. He has a new trait, Parthian merchant. Cool. Uh, well, I think the, the bureaucrat's a no-brainer for the construction costs and tax rate. Um, which will come up eventually. We need to start slowly thinking about new capitals. Um, this food situation is not great. Um, I do think beelining grain silos very, very soon would be wise. We're not going to be able to upgrade any of our main chain province uh, like settlements until we either have grain silos across the whole empire, which would be good for the economy if you think about it, almost double the income uh, as the grain pits and then boosted by all of our agriculture stuff. At that point, we will start making really good bank. Um... But we can either do that or we can kind of dedicate a settlement to farming, which is kind of what I'm thinking about doing here. Because a two, pro a two settlement province is never going to be that profitable compared to like a four settlement province. But uh, it still has some use. Anyways, what else do I want to put on you? Uh, minus land recruitment cost is big. That's just really nice. And minus 9% upkeep. So when I put, put a big army there, you know, they're not going to have such a bad day. This is terrible movement range, dude. For summer? 
I mean, the baggage train reduces your movement by minus 15%, and the baggage train uh, apparently increases your upkeep. I didn't actually realize it increases your upkeep so much. I guess maybe it reduces your um, supply consumption, though. Negative 21 instead of whatever it would have been, or does the baggage train actually consuming more? Baggage train has some major, major drawbacks these days. I don't know if it was always this bad. Um, here's the other thing that's strange. Why? So what's what's up with this? You notice it has a 15% ammunition boost, but it also states a 10% ammunition boost. Do those stack, or is it just 15% or just 10%? Because the unit itself only claims a 15%. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know the. I don't have the answer to that question. I'd have to be a, a dev for DEI. And contrary to some people's belief, when I posted a, a trailer for one of the updates once, uh, I was just kind of working with the devs, just asking if I could help in any way because I like the mod. I don't. I don't have anything to do with the development of it. Um, there were some people that were like the Creative Assembly should hire you to code the game. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're wrong. Thank you, but you're wrong. <laughs> Um, so since we're going so archer heavy, so javelin heavy, let's get the range. Let's get the range maxed out and the ammo maxed out. I love these upgrades so much. I feel like every game that's been in the Warscape engine, uh, you know, since like Rome and Medieval 1, not, not Medieval 1, but like Medieval 2 has been kind of range units have been so powerful. And I feel like they weren't so powerful in like Rome 1 or Medieval 2. You know, tell me if that's a hot take. You know, someone, someone, tell me in the comments. What do you think about that? Do you, do you, do you agree? Do you think that, you know, range stuff is, 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 is the way to go in the modern Total Wars? Because, I mean, they just seem really powerful to me. Not that there isn't any rock, paper, scissors, right? Not that the cavalry doesn't beat archers. It does. You know, you expose your stuff wrong, you die. That's fine. But it seems like on pro like proportionally, it's different. Ooh, these are new trade partners, right? Oh hell yeah! Oh, this is interesting. Why do these guys have no relation with anyone? They're not at war with anyone. They had to have been liberated, right? So they have Persian uh, culture. They like the expansionism of Parthia. They have cultural affinity with Armenia. I feel like these are like a liberated faction, but they should be an ally with someone. Very weird. Anyways, uh, how much money are you willing to give me? All three grand? No? Okay. How about 2100? How about 2700? I might be able to get 3000. Nice. On behalf of my oh, that's good stuff. Money! Greetings, friend. Can kill a man. These guys still hate me. I am here. I am here. Okay. Come, come. All right, these dudes I don't have any uh, negotiations with. No one's going to care if I go to war with them. Cool. This is going to be a number of turns still, unfortunately. All right, we got to burn these turns kind of fast. Let's uh, let's get Mosey in. Let's keep getting these elephants, though. We're investing so much money into elephants right now. If you think about it, like, look at the value of our entire 41 unit stack, like, uh, and, 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 you know, most of our infantry and such is like, what, 60 to 100 gold per turn to pay, and, uh, we're looking at the elephants at, like, between 300 and 600 gold per turn. If you look at in pure gold value, you know, we've basically got, like, a, st a 55 stack army. <laughs> Not really, but man, I would love to meet some uh, some enemies in the field with this, some infantry armies in the field, not pike armies. I'd like to meet some like Romans in the field with these. Um, you know, honestly, the elephants probably aren't going to perform too well against horse archer armies, but I do envision that any lancers that they have, any, you know, melee cavalry they have are just going to absolutely get punked. One thing that sucks is Kath is fairly well defended. But uh, I have a plan for that. I, I'm going to use this army to maybe lure some... Ooh. 
They're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. They can reach next turn. We, fight for you, my lord. Uh, we have very little food left here. See, this is the problem, right? At your command. Let's move up if they decide to take that. I will try to give them a nosebleed with what we have here. Am I prepared to lose this guy? Who is SR? Okay, he's the leader of the Sarashtan court. They only have eight loyalty. It's because of reforming a government. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. I'm, I'm not too upset by that. They are a populist too, which sucks, but whatever. Oh, is populist his trait or is it his party's trait? Okay, it is his trait. So if he dies, actually, I, I, I get a temporary debuff, but uh, this guy joins in and uh, Bigot's not great, but it's not as bad as populist. Sometimes you just need very high taxes. Taking a negative 20 loyalty hit for, for taxing your populace in times of war is totally unreasonable, said the very democratic leader, me. <laughs> Does this have any defenses? Yeah, actually, it has five units of governor guard. Where's that coming from? Oh, because this is a level three to settlement uh, because we captured it and we didn't have to change it around. Okay, great. Actually, we have recruitments for cataphracts here? Did I just not notice? I didn't notice. How do I not notice this? <laughs> okay, we could get cataphracts. I don't want cataphracts, but we could have them. Um, I will replace, I wanna know what's in this force. Oh, I wish I hadn't moved my spy that turn. I would really like to know what's in there. I'm gonna get rid of one more spear, get one more elephant. These guys are going to take so long to catch up. Probably not going to catch up even this episode, but we'll try. <laughs> Some of these episodes where it's really just the strategy map, I, I struggle with, what do I name this stuff, right? What do I call this episode? It's Strategery. Strategery 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0? I don't know, man. Sometimes not a whole lot happens and you just shuffle pieces around on the board. It's like playing Risk and just moving your troops around, you know? But uh, you, you gotta do it. Davide Tempera especially kind of takes an emphasis on moving things in calculated ways like that. You have to make sure that you de-incentivize people from attacking you, seeing weak settlements. The AI is devious enough to do stuff like that, especially if they don't like you. Um, you really got to balance a little more than vanilla. Of course, at this point, I'm uh, I'm not an expert on vanilla because I just... Uh, vanilla never really clicked for me that much. I tried it when it came out, of course. Um, Rome 2, as some know from my rants in the past, uh, Rome 2 is, is very much my... How do I put this? Rome 2 was my cautionary tale in never pre-ordering a video game ever again. Because I did, and it was bad. It was really bad on launch. Um, you know, not hating on Creative Assembly, but it's it's a very flawed product. Um, and it was a lot worse at, at launch, for sure. It just was. Um, and that's, that's saying as someone that really, really loves the, the game. What is this? What the hell happened here? That's a cool icon. That looks similar to like something in my culture, but no. Welcome, friend. Okay. Welcome. So they're uh, military allies of Bactria. They must have been liberated. Maybe Koth took this? Okay, well, I'd like a uh, trade agreement. They definitely won't agree to a 3,000 trade agreement. Probably like a 900, wow. They, don't, they must not have a whole lot of cash. To work with um i'd really like military access guys that's actually kind of a big deal mm -hmm. um hmm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the trade agreement is worth quite a bit to them look at the difference to to get it up to moderate so when does this become high Wow. Wow. Okay. They're not going to accept that. 100% they're not going to accept that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, give me the 600, please. We'll, we'll just settle on trade today. And maybe we can come back another time. 
and with this generous offer, we have seen its results. So that means we're gonna need to route up through here. We can't go through uh, Bactria now. That sucks. We can go up this way, but uh, there's a river crossing here. I'm not sure how that'd work out. Looks like Sokka saw my, uh, my stack. They are intimidated. I'm gonna move back. We can just shuffle. We can play the shuffle back and forth. Uh, I'm not worried about potentially losing this. The losing this is a win to me in some ways. Um, we are taxing them, right? Yeah, okay, go. Cool, cool, cool. Making a good amount of cash. Pretty nice amount of cash, actually. Uh, Parthava is a lot more profitable. Way more profitable, just by virtue of it being four settlements, I think. Even with this, uh, kind of almost like a wasted slot. I mean, we're getting... I mean, we're getting plus 42 happiness because of military presence. Military presence only providing 22, actually. Hmm. You guys are overjoyed. Characters is 18. Okay. That explains it. That explains it. Yeah, we have good, uh, good leaders here to keep the populace nice and settled down. Hmm. Well. Let's start going for those grain silos. We need to start looking for the next economic push down the line here. Uh, beyond that, let's not forget to go into patrol stance. Always do that unless you're close to the enemy or, you know, in hostile territory. It's always a good idea. And let's spend the money on the shrine. Really helping us out to get all this trade. I have to imagine our trade is pretty valuable. Pretty valuable being on the Silk Road or whatever. I say or whatever. I'm pretty sure it is specifically on the Silk Road, but my knowledge of this region and history is relatively dim. Which actually brings me to, to a point. Um, if you guys have tidbits about the history of the region or the units or the culture or anything like that, Man, feel free to talk about it. Uh, feel free to tell me some stuff. Lecture me a little bit, man. Um, I enjoy that kind of discourse, I guess you could say. Um, you know, you talk to different YouTubers and you get different opinions on how they like to do interaction with their community. Some don't like backseat gaming and, you know, getting dictated at in comments. I don't care. <laughs> I just like learning stuff. Uh, rather than keeping to their nomadic life, they have embraced local customs and people. While Parthians haven't changed their ways of waging war after conquering lands to the south, they have adopted parts of local clothing, armors, and even religion. During the Parthian kingdom, cavalry became even heavier and horse archers deadlier. Infantry was still only there to support cavalry, but their increase in available manpower of conquered lands and their tradition provided more reliable foot soldiers. Well, I'm... I'm glad they seem to be getting bodied by their neighbors. Looks like they took uh, Ekbaktana back. Didn't they lose this? I thought they had lost that to uh, Atropatkin. I feel like Atropatkin lost Gore too. They didn't. They hadn't lost this before, right? They had to control this. And how is how did Kidri get over here? I don't, I don't like this because I feel like Atropakin is actually starting to lose a little bit. What's their power? Look at this. They've lost a lot of territory. It says they're even with me now. They're still powerful. Man, I almost want to send them some money or something. What's your money like? Very strong. Okay, I, I mean, they have plenty of funds. They're fine. Makes me a little nervous. Where did that stack go to? I need to know that. That is important. Where the hell did they go? We discovered that. Yeah, that's going to be really important soon to, to know where the hell it went. So the idea here is to use this uh, army, start raiding and pillaging and such, and put my big stack like right behind it in ambush stance, or right in front of it in ambush stance. Just within range. And then we're going to punk them. We're going to jump on them. I don't like Bactria doing this, looking at me with its stack of 31 units right here. This uh, garrison is made up of eight Indian townsfolk. I don't think that's going to be the play against what appears to be at least nine pikemen, if not more. 
I I feel like I gotta start thinking about putting garrisons up here. Pactree, you're not thinking about attacking me, right? We have a non-aggression pact, right? Welcome. We have military access. They still barely like me. Look at that cultural aversion. Expansionism. Leash troops of Parthia, broken treaties with Bactria. They are at war with Sokka. We're gonna almost wanna be like cruel to them if we don't wanna go to war with Bactria. They barely like me enough to not attack me outright, I feel like. And they may attack me outright. This army can almost reach. Uh, it's like taking an unnecessary war at this time would, it wouldn't cripple us exactly, but it would slow down our growth. And when you slow down your growth, you start losing. It's like um, getting a 2% cost of living raise when the inflation is, you know, 6%. You actually took a loss. Don't want to do that. Alright, so can all this go? No. Right, because we need to move these out too. Alright. Full 41 unit stack. Five, six elephants... How many swordsmen is this? I got seven? I didn't mean to get seven. Well, whatever. Wait, I did mean to get seven, right? Yeah, I got sevens and sevens. That's really weird for me. I don't usually do that, but I was looking for 14 infantry. Right, okay. Right, seven swordsmen, seven heavy spearmen, seven archer sword hybrids, or six, six spear archer hybrids, eight javelins. Very weird stack. Not quite like one I've used before. No pikes, no hoplites. Uh, someone did suggest using like hoplites from from Bactria. I do like that, but I don't feel comfortable fighting Bactria just yet. I don't know how this army performs yet. That's my big concern. I don't know how the army is going to function. Um, it's just a little spooky. Uh, so I think we're up north now. I think we're out of like the desert zone. I think. I'm wondering if I can get rid of these baggage trains. I'm pretty sure I can. I'm going to get rid of this one. Because I want to keep the stack if possible. And I'd like to kind of coordinate everyone. Uh, maybe this one just lives back here for a while. I'm just a little spooked. I'm just a little spooked. And then I don't have a garrison building up here yet, either. We can afford it, so we better we better start working on it. Just just a little something, just something. Locals would be good, but I have uh, recruited the maximum amount of locals. Mm, I think you move that way for now, actually. Maybe you'll be the garrison. You can hand those units off. That keeps them close enough. I'm just worried about this western border and then maybe having some troops that can move south if I need to would be good through the desert. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Almost at the end of this episode already. Mostly I've waffled and talked. We passed a few turns though. It's been like a, what, like a year in game time? Three or four turns. For one 30 minute period of working on the strategic map, that's not too bad. We don't have a whole lot to manage yet either. Not a whole lot of individual clicks to make. Uh, when you get up to the higher Imperium level... No way. What in the hell do they think they're doing? No way they attack that. If they do, I'm gonna- I'm gonna let them. If they take that, they can have that. I will take Bactria. I will go to war with this whole province and I'll sweep it because they put so much of their important military right here. And both this army right here, a four-star general. Bactria, what the hell are you thinking? I am here to listen. I mean, I can't do anything else with them. Truth will be your sharpest weapon. They're not gonna agree to anything. There's, there's nothing. Hmm. They're also defensive allies of Atropatkin. That's interesting. Uh, I'm not defensive allies with them. You have my full attention. 
They're, they're not interested in having a defensive alliance with me, though. Look at this. Look at this. Not for 32,000. Just completely uninterested. They are aggressive and treacherous. Who knows? I could find myself fighting wars on two fronts very soon. What's their relationship with Bactria? It's got to be pretty good if they're defensive allies. Ooh, yeah, they like them more than they like me. <sighs> I don't like this at all, dude. This is actually very suspect. I'm not feeling great about the moves I'm going to have to make here. I feel like Bactria was wanting this province and they're mad that they didn't get it. And then they lost this territory here. So now, now Bactria is doing the calculation, right? They're thinking, where do I expand? Where can I go? And what they're seeing is 75% of their opportunity to expand is me. And like 25% is Koth. I'm about to take Koth or Kath or whatever also. So we're going to go to war with them. I would like to basically surround Bactria as a, as a kingdom before I even take them. But, uh... Is there desert here? I'm so spooked, dude. Okay, how many turns to reach this? Two. Absolutely two. Mercenaries? Just archers. Levies. 27 units. So the math right now for me is, do I think I can give these guys enough of a nosebleed in a... Um, in a, in, a, in a straight up siege like this. Do I think I can give them enough of a nosebleed that this army could come in and sweep them? And I don't have the answers to that. My best guess is maybe. What's my requirement for ambush? 30%? Okay, they should be able to reach in one turn from there. Go to ambush stance. Hopefully they don't spot me sitting here. I'm just, I'm just spooked. Let's see. I think if this happens, we maybe can re-siege it and take it in one turn. That would be nice. And we do have the spare forces to, to do stuff like that. I'd like to sit here and recruit. But I'm scared that it'll influence their decision. And if they want to make war on me, I'm kind of okay with it. I don't like it, but... You know, I don't want to completely stop them from making that choice either. If they want to make that choice, let them make that choice, and I will sweep them very quickly. Because this army will take all of their villages. One, two, three. At least. Yeah, it'll take these three very quickly. Um, there's one here we can take. There's one here we can take. I don't even have to worry about taking... Bactria only has 22 defenders. Never mind, I'll take Bactria too. Let's hope they're not that stupid, yeah? They might just be nervous themselves. I'm marching huge armies through their territory. I mean, you know, maybe they're just worried. All right, we need to see if we can find that stack. They are recruiting, which sucks. Uh, Koth is... It's okay, well defended. It's not horribly well defended, but it's could be worse. I'd like to raid, but I can't. Just go to ambush stance. I don't want to take any fights here. Don't even want them to know I'm here. Yeah, I have an unassigned skill. Okay. Uh, you're one of mine. You're one of mine, and for some reason I keep taking my guys down governor paths. I, you know... <laughs> I've made my choices. Give me taxes, give me Aggie. Alright. Uh, what traits can I give you? What's the happiness like? It's crazy good here. Tariff income from trade agreements, plus two public order from military, plus four public order from military is pretty good. 10% research rate is... get research rate for me. Um, nothing for happiness otherwise. We have an arrogant wife. Okay, good for you, buddy. <laughs> Enjoy, I guess. Uh, all right. One more turn, we'll call it. Or rather, we'll just end this turn, and if anything happens, we'll set up the next episode, basically. I'm going to try to release these on the same day uh, as I record them, or at least uh, the first one, and then anything else that I get is just gravy, and it'll roll over to the next days.
There's a stack. That's not THE stack, though. Does that mean that they split a stack, or does that mean they have two stacks? If they have two stacks, I'm gonna be kinda mad. They don't have the territory to be, be holding that much, I don't think. Uh... I don't think. I mean, I actually don't know how much territory they hold. It is also winter. I'm sorry for eating all of the food in the region. <laughs> Alright, so we set you up this turn. Let's do another little scan with our uh, scout. Bactria is moving in. They're thinking about it. We discover a Bactria and spy up there. That's fine. What are your intentions? How bad is the food situation here now? Still not great. Well, we're just gonna sit right here and that solves some of our public order issues also. We can start taxing again, giving us an extra thousand per turn. And, whoa, yeah, that's right, we have very advanced barracks in here, but we don't have the civilians, we don't have the populace to support them. Highly unfortunate. Yeah, the best, like, Shruta's units we can get just, yeah, they ain't worth it. Okay. Could always get some, uh, Indo-Hellenic Thwero Spears, which are not terrible. Yeah, 81930 armor. Yeah, they're, like, comparable-ish. Not quite as good as our own Spears, and, uh, more expensive for that, all things considered. But they're not terrible. Uh, hmm, okay. Yeah, since I'm kind of reliant on foreign population here. I just, I just man, I know these are Peltists that can actually do a little bit of melee combat, but man, that sucks. I, I never want to spend 1300 on a Peltist. We have plenty of Peltists uh, defending the town anyways. That's not what we would need here. Uh, we would need high quality spears and such. Well. And these guys have disciplined formation too. Or uh, defensive formation. Which is that nice pact. It's kind of like a phalanx. I don't know if it actually functions like a phalanx in uh, Davidia Tempera. But it, it looks like one. That's got to count for something. We're going to get like two of those. Get like two of these. There you go. We'll have a little bit of higher quality um, infantry over time. Also, the recruitment here is locked to one per turn because we only have one town. Even though we have a level three barracks, kind of sucks that it doesn't increase our uh, recruitment capacity. Looks like even uh, upgrading the main chain doesn't upgrade our uh, recruitment capacity. My Lord. Wow. Man, time flies, guys. I did not mean for this to run to almost 40 minutes. I apologize if that's too long for you. But uh, I'm going to go upload this video now. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you later. Peace out.